All right, today I'm going to go over some wiring basics for the ECU Master EMU. So if you get your EMU and you don't get a plug and play adapter, uh, you're going to have to wire it in yourself or have somebody do it for you. Uh, anyway, there's going to be some wiring involved. So I'll show you. Here's, here's what the EMU looks like when it comes to the package. You got some stickers, pinout card, warranty card, and you got the ECU itself. And if you look in the bottom, you've got connectors and pins and some flyback diodes. So here are the two styles of pins. One's smaller, one's larger. Uh, they have various assignments on the connectors. Here are the connectors themselves. And these are keyed and they're color coded. So you got your gray connector would go on the gray side. Attaches with that cam lock. So what I'm going to do today is just show you some, some basics of how to run through and, and wire these connectors. So I'll just set this to the side. Now I've got an extra set of connectors here. Um, one thing to note, when you're looking at the pinout, so just for the sake of clarification, when you're, when you're trying to identify which wire is where, um, let's say we want pin 1 on the black connector, EGTN number 1, it's going to be top left. So this diagram is as if you're looking at the EMU. If you'll note on the picture here, there's a picture of the map sensor port right in the middle, along with the connectors. So if you're looking for, let's say, pin 18 on the gray connector, 18's here, so 17's on the very bottom left. 18 would be the next one over. So just remember it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Next row is 9 through 16, last row is 17 through 24. And that's true for both connectors. So just to avoid any confusion there. So first thing you want to do with the connectors is prepare them to receive a pin. There's a, a secondary lock here, this yellow lock, that actually holds the pins in place. So what I'm going to do is use a small pick to pop that out. And it has two positions. One is kind of halfway out, the other one's completely removed. I like to remove them completely because I'll use a multimeter to test before I finalize the harness. But here's the lock, halfway out and then completely removed. And you can see if you need to release a pin, there are three rows of, of latches that once the pin goes in from this side, the latch will fall down into a notch on the pin itself. You have to lift that with a very sharp pick in order to remove the pin, to depin it, and put another pin in its place. So I'm going to show you some tools here. Uh, I've got some end cutters. These are good for, for clipping wires. Um, these are a really basic crimper. You can find these on Amazon, eBay, maybe your local parts store has them. Uh, pretty traditional for automotive terminals. These are a set with jaws that work really well for the uh, FCI connectors that we use on the EMU. These are a really nice set. They're only like 23 bucks off Amazon. Uh, Here's just some snap-on crimpers that are good cutters if you need to do uninsulated butt connections, something like that. Um, these have no place in a toolbox. These are probably 30 years old, don't do much of anything. These crimpers are useless for what we're doing, so I just kind of threw these in as an example of what not to use. And then some, some very generic wire strippers here that you can find anywhere. You can buy nicer wire strippers, you can buy cheaper ones, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that if they're not adjustable, if they've got specific jaws here that you pick the right one for the gauge wire we're using. This wire right here is probably a 20 gauge. So I'll strip the end of the wire. You can take a look at it. Make sure you don't cut the actual copper conductor. That's very important because you don't want to remove strands. So once you verify that you haven't cut it, uh, I'll use our basic crimpers here. I'm going to insert the terminal. This one's going to be position E, which is the smallest one. I'll insert the pin, feed the wire from the back side, make sure that the conductor is lined up with that first area that I'm going to crimp. Squeeze, pull it out and inspect it, make sure it's nice and, and snug in there, make sure it's not misaligned, there's nothing going on. Then I'll move up to the next jaw bigger to crimp the terminal on the insulation itself. Once that's crimped, take a good look at it. See how the conductor is right on that first crimp, then it's crimped around the insulation. And then to insert that into the connector, you always go in from the side with the seal in it. And notice there's two size holes here. On the outside we have the wires for the EGT channels, grounds, and ignition of a larger pin. And then the inside terminals have a smaller one. And just compare the shape of the pin. This one, you know, the, the long side goes vertically. All you do is insert it in that slot. You hear the click when it goes in. If you need to remove it, you just use a pick from the front side, remove that latch I was telling you about.
And then you can release the pen and pull it back out, reinsert it. Let's see, put it in this one. Hear the click. Once you're done releasing and inserting pins, take the seal of lock to finalize it. Helps if I put it on the right way. There are two ways you can use it. See how it's not symmetrical? Just make sure you have it going the right way. Which is hard when you're not looking at it directly. Insert it halfway completely. That way the pin's locked in, you're ready to go. Uh, but again, that's just a very basic introduction to wiring the EMU. How to do some various crimping and, uh, and pin insertion tasks. That's it for today. Thank you.